So now let's move on to the definition of the theory. The most simple definition of the theory is what we know about and how we know it. So it implies two parts. First is a generated knowledge about the way how universe works and how we know it. So there is an understanding of the whole process and the whole process of getting this knowledge from the experiences of people or generalizing different ideas which individuals come up with. So here, with the theory, we want to answer a few questions. First, how does it work? How do interpersonal relationships work? How do family relationships work? How does the media affect us? And what is the cause of this? What it is produces? What this particular relationship will produce in future? So as we know how it works right now, we want to know what are the consequences of this or another sort of the interaction. Would it produce fear? Maybe it will produce another relationship emerging there on the basis of the previous ones? Well, these are the questions. What causes it to happen? What were the initial uh, stimulus and initial factors that would define the certain way that relationship will maintain and how it will be developing? what should be the case of our studying and what should be the case for our research what are the particular frames and the, what is the framework basically of uh, the whole process of human uh, communication how do we use this term theory we do use it quite often and i come up with different theories every day for example the best coffee should be served before 10 a.m. in the morning and maybe later and after 10 a.m. the coffee would taste better or maybe it would taste worse. For my case, it would taste worse because I will be already waking up and I will not feel this excitement from the coffee. But can we call this a theory? Definitely no. But in this case, we are speaking about the common sense theory. Let's take a look to the interpersonal communication. In a common sense, you never tell any secrets or any embarrassing information to the person you first time meet in the bar. This is a very good advice, but it does not have any academic or any, any other evidence apart from the individual experience of yours. So never talking to strangers in a bar, well, not never talking to strangers, never telling embarrassing secrets to the strangers in the bar, that would be quite a common sense theory. The other point when we use the term theory, when we speak about working theory, you definitely do study or maybe you're a professional already. So you have some sort of guidelines which navigate you through your professional process. So in this case, working theory can be knowing the people you're going for a meeting with. Maybe this is the first time you meet and you want to develop some sort of enterprise with them. So you have to do kind of research about what other people and what are you going to do with them in order to be successful during this meeting. So you kind of conduct some sort of preparation and some sort of research. This can be a part of your working theory which guides you through the professional process. And finally, scholarly theory. This is what we're going to talk about. Well, you will find this very practical and you probably will have some assumptions about how you've already used this theory in advance before even knowing that there is the whole theory developed about this communication process. But how is it different from two uh, theories which we mentioned before, this common sense and working theory. Well, this is a systematic observation and this is a systematic research which leads to the development of some sort of generalization about the way how the world works. So, for example, if we already talked about the interpersonal communication and in the first case, you just have a little part of the knowledge which will guide you through this interpersonal communication with a stranger. But there is the whole theory which is devoted to the way how interpersonal communication which will develop between two individuals and this is the case of social penetration theory 
So basically, it says that while we are communicating with another person, we would go through a certain stages and we will disclose an information which can be totally different. We'll start with the very superficial information and exchange some data about ourselves. So where are we from? What are we doing? What's our profession? And the more communication develops, we deeper we go to the topics which are close for us and which are quite scary to share with people we don't really know. Scholars uh, outline that with the whole process of interpersonal communication goes towards the self-disclosure. And basically, the main point of the interpersonal communication is to communicate the concept of self. We want to share our very deepest secret, we want to share our fears, we want to share our understanding of the world with another individual. So this theory, on the contrary of the first two, outlines the whole steps in which communication would be developing. And it implies a number of cases which were investigated and studied in advance. How do we use this term in communication studies? We can see theory as an abstract understanding of the communication process. Well, once my student in the class asked me a question, she raised her hand and she asked, why do we have to study things which are already there, which they live through, but with different words. Why do we have to learn these new words just to describe what's happening with us right here and right now? That was a very good question. And basically what happens here is that this new definition, they help us to create an understanding. Before naming the thing, we can't really say that the thing exists. So this abstract understanding of the communication process is very useful as you acquire the terms and the definitions which will help you to go through the thing and will help you to describe and understand what's going on. The second approach is a lens. A lens or a framework through which we see and interpret the world and our everyday practices. How does it work here in this particular case? Well, we probably have some students from different places and there would be different points of the communication. And in this case, interpersonal communication can be developing much faster uh, than in other countries. So this lens just can help us to limit the context of the communication and help us to focus on the particular elements of the communicative processes and kind of forget about something else. Anyway, when it comes to the public speech, with, we can talk about the rhetorics. When it comes to the mediated communication, we talk about the channel and the way how influence occurs between this medium and the individual itself. So this lens is quite a limitation. Communication happens with us all the time and it's never ending process. But in order to study something closer or understand a particular steps of the communication development, we need to focus and we need to wear these lenses to just limit our perspective at the little point. The third point is the systematic summary about the nature of the communication process. Here what comes with the real objective research which focuses on the very important generalization. So can be people seen the same? Well, uh, as we see communication through the lens, definitely we cannot compare different people in different countries or people who belong to different cultures. But in this case, we can provide a sort of generalizations and try to systemize the knowledge that we have. So we can speak about the new knowledge which describes the patterns of the communication. So why do we need theory? Well, the first case is to describe. As I already told you about the case with my student, we need new terms and new words to uh, understand what is going on, to focus on something. And this would help us to explain why and how is it happening. Uh, humans are very special creatures. We do need an explanation. We need to know why does it rain. We need to understand why this speaker is more successful than another one. We need to understand how the message that we read in the newspaper would be understood by the other people. Uh, the third point is to predict. What's going to happen? Well, the predictive power of theory is quite strong because when we are guided by the theory, we can see a little bit further as 
in the real life, we can usually see what, what's happening right here and right now. Uh, transformation of the reality and transformation of our values is another very powerful potential of uh, the theoretical approach. So when we understand, we describe something, we explain it, and we predicted what's going to happen, maybe we can be guided and we can adapt our lives somehow to adapt our values, to adapt our way of thinking, so we can make a better world in which it would be comfortable and pleasant for us to live in.